Glad to have you with us. Thanks for spending a little time with your news today on this Tuesday, the third day of the second month of 2015, where sunshine was nice, I suppose. I've been out in very little, next to none of it, actually. And we've got snow in the forecast for late, late tomorrow night into your Thursday morning. I'll touch base on your weather forecast and some other news before I leave you this evening. However, much like last evening, the majority of our focus will be on the second day of trial in regards to the case of John Montgomery versus Charles Doc Harden and the McGoffin County Board of Elections. We'll pick it up with testimony in just a few moments. First of all, let me say this. I do realize that the volume makes it hard to hear in some, maybe even more than just a few occasions of the video. I've made some adjustments tonight. You still, regardless of what I do, have the hum of the heating and air conditioning system inside the room. However, I've tried to isolate it just a bit and I have upped the volume just a little bit on another side of the uh, track, so to speak. So hopefully that will help, but it is just something that, well, I have to live with on a daily basis when shooting in applications such as this and situations. So with my apologies, I'll do the best I can to bring you the audio uh, to the best of my ability. More testimony in day two. We'll resume right after these words from a few of our sponsors and I'll be right back. You have to be at the board, that's all I Did you receive any complaints as a member of the Board of Elections? No, I didn't. Were there ever any complaints brought forward to the Board of Elections on election day itself? I, I don't remember. I don't, I don't know. I'm resuming briefly with testimony from last evening from the point that I left off. If you recall, I started off the program last night saying that I had left the courthouse around 4 o'clock or so to come and start putting the show together. And this is some information after I left the Justice Center, rather, instead of the courthouse, testifying at this time here in front of you now, as she was before uh, Judge Preston yesterday, is Susie Salyer, an employee of McGoughlin County, also an election board member, also wife of Randy Salyer, of course, who served two years nearly in prison for election fraud about four years ago. <laughs> And, and who operates the machine to get the count? The clerk puts the feeder on it, the reader that prints out the paper. She puts the PB. We're there with her, and she puts the PB in it and does it. What is a PB? The PB counts the votes. It's on there. You put it in to operate the machine. And then do you get a printout out of it, or how does yes. that Salyer was questioned for a brief period of time and then allowed to leave for work. However, they reserved the right to recall her back at a later point in time. This morning's testimony began with that of Thomas Vastrick. He is a forensic handwriting expert. He is an author on the subject. He's testified in more than 300 cases, he says, uh, for public defenders, law enforcement. Uh, he's had some of his works published, uh, conducted seminars, and has other credits to his resume, if you will, and experience of being a forensic hand, forensic handwriting specialist. This morning, he brought information after analysis not to determine whose signature it was on a piece of material inspected, a voter absentee registration card or a ballot, but whether or not those signatures indeed matched or were written by the same individual. Uh, I was asked to make a, a uh, comparative examination between the signatures on, uh, on these precinct roster forms and compare that with the signatures from the uh, voter registration form. Now, are there published standards as to how to conduct these examinations? Yes. What was the standard applicable to this case? Uh, the standard is ASTM uh, standard E2290 took this examination as a comparison of signature to a signature. Did I find, uh, even to a minimal degree, evidence of the two writings having been written by the same person? So I set the bar very low for common authorship uh, because the purpose of this examination was to determine whether there was specific evidence of uh, multiple writers. So. There was a, a strong level of confidence, a moderate level of confidence, all the way down to just a minimal level of confidence. 
that the two writings were done by the same person, they did not make it into the report and it's named that way. There had to be significant and uh, compelling characteristic differences between the two writings for the, uh, and lack of the, what I pre-stated about similarities, to make the list of signatures that made it my report. On uh, this examination, I found 43 sets of voter signatures that uh, I did not even find a minimal level of characteristic similarities indicative of having been written by the same person. What are the findings uh, from the examination? Uh, other findings, well, I found 38 samples where the uh, uh, provided voter registration form was uh, had either not been signed or was so illegible I couldn't work with it. So examinations were not done. Um, I found one instance of a signature not placed on the uh, proper line on the uh, precinct roster. Check your honor, peace. Handling expert, not an expert on whether or not the document is filled out correctly. So, to the extent that he wants to testify that this is comparable to that, I think that's appropriate. To the extent that he's going to say it wasn't an appropriate line, so therefore it shouldn't be counted or it's painted in some way, yeah, he can't testify to that. I found uh, two instances in which there was uh, differences with the last name that was used. Uh, that three and then I found one instance where there were purportedly two different people with the exact same name and there was no designation of a junior or senior or the third or anything that would differentiate the two people. What were the results of that examination specifically? I found in, in addition to the previous 43 I found 14 additional uh, voter signatures that uh, corresponding pairs of signatures did not have even a minimal level of uh, characteristic agreement. Mr. Vastrick also says that he cited 22 occasions where the signature on the internal flap of the absentee ballot and the signature on the outer envelope uh, had zero correlation between the two as if they were not written by the same individual and also there were displays to illustrate that fact of a few of the signatures that he was speaking of. Can you please uh, take us through this illustration and explain to the court how it establishes the basis for your findings? Uh, what I did was just take a couple of examples of signatures in which I did not find any uh, even a minimal level of uh, characteristic agreement between the uh, sets of signatures uh, just, to, just to give a, a visual display of how diverse uh, that these signatures were and why there was uh, why it was that I found that there was no evidence of uh, common authorship. Uh, these display uh, significant difference in skill level, slant, writing size, spacing, uh, very elementary parts to uh, handwriting characteristics, and I felt that the, uh, the obviousness of the differences uh, uh, needed to be pointed out to the court so they could properly assess the uh, what it was I was doing. Did you make another illustration? Yes, sir, I did. Is this that illustration? Yes. Please explain to me how this is illustrative of your findings. Well, this is illustrative of. of um, that there were other examinations or other conclusions that I had reached other than with those approximately 100 uh, voters. 
And this was the example of the two different riders that I found uh, evidence of the entire uh, package of absentee application, uh, absentee ballot, uh, interflap, uh, and mailing envelope, all very, very strong evidence of all having been written by the same person. In cross-examination of Mr. Vastrick, attorneys representing Hardin and the Board of Elections pointed out there were various factors that could affect handwriting over the course of several years. Several years from the point that a voter registration card was filled out, maybe when someone turned 18, and the date of which they voted, maybe spanning 20, 30, 40 years. ...as many specimens as they could possibly find, correct? You didn't make that request. Correct, I did not. Do you know if he, if he made any effort? To, to obtain additional specimens. I don't know where Okay. And in your words, on your website, you say a forensic document examination cannot be adequately performed by comparing by doing a one-to-one -one comparison. For purposes of handwriting identification, correct, because you have to add the second sentence to that. And, and have it... So if you, want, if you want the writing identified to a specific writer, yeah, you have to have more than one signature. Absolutely. And isn't that, the, is that your understanding of what the Board of Relations uh, responsibilities are? To make sure that the person that is signing on Maxine DuBout, for instance, is the person that's on the, uh, that's on the uh, voter registration card? Isn't that their duty? Make sure the same voter? Well, you think so, but they're the ones that only require one signature on the voter registration. They're not handwriting experts, sir. They're not, they don't, they don't write books on this, you do. And you have stated that a one-to-one -one is not, you cannot adequately perform this kind of examination for identification purposes. That's and I've asked you, isn't that their responsibility to, to identify whether or not the same person, it's the same voter, right? To make sure there's no voter fraud. That's their job, correct? Yes. And they can have, you can, and you went back behind them, and that's perfectly appropriate, that's what you've been hired to do. You went back behind them to Bird Dog to make sure that the same kind of thing as more um, with more time and more expertise that they don't have and you've done also a one-to-one -one without requesting mr flores to obtain as many specimens as they can possibly find correct well, i think the key to that is he said it's election commission's responsibility now, i'm asking what you did no, you you said it was the election commission's responsibility to do that i agree okay and do what you're doing is you're going back behind them which is perfectly appropriate you're going behind them and doing it the same event just okay. Further testimony heard and shown here after the break will include individuals question about whether or not they had sold their vote, transported anyone to the polls, paid for votes, and other questions posed by the prosecution. And I'll pick up with those remarks after a few words. We'll resume with testimony of a Jerry Adams, who was a witness for the prosecution, who testified uh, and also referred to a sworn statement uh, that he had filled out prior about a cousin he identified as a Jason Holland, picking him up the day of the election, taking him to vote for Dr. Harden and Carson Montgomery, and then him being paid $25 thereafter by someone else in the parking lot of the save -a grocery store. You want to stop? So once you were done casting your ballot in the uh, in the election, what did you do next? I met somebody at Save a Lot. I don't know who it was. He just said we were doing somebody at Save a Lot. Stopped there. He got out of the car. He went to a car. I don't you know. There's two or three cars sitting in the same place. Either library. I don't know which car he got into. I don't you know. I don't know. But stopped there. He must have got some money. He got back in the car and we went to the house. He dropped me out. And so, so who took you to the same one? Jason. And once you got to the same one, you said there were three cars? Three or four, same. I mean, two or three of them cars. I couldn't tell which one got in. It was either light gray or gray in the house. my best ability. You know. Like I said, I'm not very smart, I'm not very bright. So, so Jason got into a car with a light red car. <coughs> who was in that car? I don't know. Do you know if it was a male or a female? He told me it was a woman he was meeting with. But you didn't see her? No. 
This is your earlier one. How did he know you voted for Dr. Hart? Oh, yeah, girl, I don't think that's what he said. I mean, I don't know. Did you vote for Dr. Hart? Yes. And how did Jason find out? I don't, I don't know. Did you just trust him? I guess. Did you fill out a voter assistance form? Thought any other forms beside the precinct roster list? Did you sign the precinct roster list when you came in? Yes. Never signed nothing about that. Is it possible some of that that twenty five dollars was actually for scrap? I don't know. You didn't know what it really was for. He just told me to go down boat and he paid the twenty five dollars. And but he didn't pay you to go forward. No. Good action, that's an answer. So uh, that didn't have any influence on you. No. But this uh, but you are in scrap business with it? Yes, we can give it to a lot of scrap business. Okay. And you remember you were interviewed uh, by a man called Christensen? Yes. And was that done about January 29th this year? This year? This, uh, this month? This, this month. Okay. And did you uh, tell him uh, on that $25? First, was Mr. Christensen polite to him? Yes. And did you tell him that you didn't know if that twenty-five dollars was for voting or for scrap that the two of you sold together? That you and Jason sold. Other testimony was presented on behalf of a Mr. Stacy Russell. He has a niece identified. Uh, also, she entered some testimony yesterday as a Stephanie Montgomery, as a precinct worker at the Flat Fork Precinct. He testified that he came to the area and observed the precinct from across the road at a relative's home after she had sent complaints through family that they were taking individuals, uh, someone was taking individuals two at a time to vote, uh, assisting them when assistance was not needed or and or asked for. He also said that he observed what appeared to be someone hauling votes uh, based on his personal observances throughout much of the morning and early afternoon hours. How long did that meeting last? Yeah. People seem agitated at all. Following that uh, observation, uh, what else did you see as you were watching the platform? There was a gray extended cab Dodge pickup. Okay. They was hauling two motors at a time. They pulled up at the top of the when you pull the park. The motors would get out and go over and then come back in the pickup. This happened probably eight times within an hour. There were probably 14 to 16 people that went down the boat at this one truck brought in. And then... Well, I, real quick, what type of interval was there? How often did that Every 30, probably 30 minutes. What 25, is this? you know, 25 to 30 minutes. And when was this occurring? What time? And, uh, probably, I don't know, to one. Okay. And uh, after it done it about three to four times, I went back and talked to the deal and called the Kentucky State Police. I told them just to come out you know, and sit around. They would send someone out. Why would the Kentucky State Police need to sit around? <clears throat> well, I just I thought it seemed odd that one vehicle would keep grabbing motors just as one vehicle. 
Russell also went on to say that that same pickup truck that he would watch as he would drive uh, down the road the distance of a half a mile or less would meet other vehicles in the parking lot of the head of Coon Church, and uh, that process would continue to go back and forth. He also identified a driver of one of those vehicles, which was seen in that same parking lot of the church, as a Greg Isaac, who was called to testify a short time later. In Isaac's testimony, he swore under oath that he had transported several individuals to the voting precinct on Flat Fork to vote, as he had done prior acquaintances or neighbors who he knew did not have vehicles or transportation who he was giving a ride to if so needed. He also said that he was at that church parking lot on a couple of occasions that day, one time for maybe the period of an hour or so walking or exercising and just spending some time out of the house. He admitted to taking uh, two brothers, a Simon and Mickey Marshall, a Mr. Paul Blanton, and two Gamble brothers to the church, all to vote, he says. Uh, as I repeat, as I mentioned just before, that the reason being they didn't have a ride. Does, does driving around that agitate your back? Yes, it does. Mr. Isaac, why would you choose to walk around the parking lot as opposed to near the place? Well, yeah. on that day, there's people out. Why would I choose to sit in the house and look at four walls all day? I can't sit in the house all the time. You ever walk around your property, though? I do. Why not just walk around your property? Well, I enjoy uh, seeing the lights in the door. Later, two individuals, brothers, a Simon Marshall, first testified that he did go to vote, but that he didn't know a Greg Isaac, and that another individual he identified as a Jim, I believe, transported him to and from the poll, and that he didn't get paid for his vote. He also said that he didn't sign any papers or documents while at the voting precinct. Also similar and also some conflicting testimony on behalf of his brother, Mickey excuse me, Mickey Marshall, who also testified that he had gotten a ride uh, to and from the poll that he had gone with his brother, but that it also was with a different individual than was testified to earlier during testimony. Next to testify was Doug Perkins, an employee at the Handy Mart on Route 40, who said that he did see one of the Simon brothers on election day with more than what he considers the usual amount of money that he might have on his person, one, two, maybe three dollars. How did you see Simon Marshall? He came in the store and uh, he was just, <laughs> he just came in the store and he just got in rented and he had a $50 bill. Really? He held it up. He held it up? Yeah, he said, you know, he just kind of, I don't know, I guess he was just happy to have a $50 bill. I guess I'd have been happy if I'd had one too. <laughs> The last person to testify today was Larry Shepard, husband of County Clerk Renee Shepard. His testimony wasn't completed, and I haven't gotten into that yet. I'll get into that tomorrow, as well as tomorrow's testimony and other information as what we believe is going to be the final day of this case. For now, thank you all for being a part of the program. We'll see you back here tomorrow night for more of your news today.